What's up, everybody? I'm the Gojiryu Philosopher, and last time we discussed how kata became shortened and condensed from 30-minute technique encyclopedias to 90-second cliffs notes. But we still have one last step to go. Up until now, every stage of kata development that I've mentioned took place primarily in China and among Chinese martial artists. However, it would be a mistake to ignore the fact that as my personal inspiration Jesse Senpai would say, Okinawa is the birthplace of karate. Okinawan kata do not, by and large, look like the forms practiced in even the most closely related of Chinese martial arts. And that's because, despite being based on Chinese forms, they have acquired the special characteristics that could only have come from Okinawa. Let's take a look at a map real quick. Okinawa Island, and the entire Ryukyu archipelago, is located in a really key position. From these small islands, you can launch off to almost anywhere in East Asia and the Pacific. Prior to the Satsuma invasion in 1609, the Ryukyu kingdoms were a key trading connection for basically the entirety of East Asia. Ryukyu in culture included elements from Japan and China, of course, but also from Sumatra, Vietnam, Java, and quite a few other places. It's very likely that the indigenous martial arts traditions of Okinawa received similar influence from all of these various cultures. Additionally, Ryukyu and Kata also received quite a strong influence from the unique type of dance that was incredibly important in the Ryukyu kingdoms up until Shotai was forced to abdicate. Ryukyu and martial arts were largely practiced by the aristocracy, and they ended up bringing their own understanding of body movement, which came primarily from dance, into their practice of the kata. Motobu Ryu in particular has done quite a lot of interesting research into the similarity and cross-pollination between Ryukyu and traditional dance and Ryukyu and martial arts. In Goju Ryu, we'll especially see this kind of influence in kata such as Tensho, which uses the ideas of Ogamite and Konerite, hand motions that are most commonly found in Okinawan dance, to guide its pattern of movement. This final stage of kata is what really makes kata, and karate in general, truly an Okinawan cultural product. When it comes to analyzing the meaning of the fighting techniques present in kata, this step might not be the most important stage, but it is still a very interesting look into the way that karate's kata became the way that they are today. Of course, this unique cultural ethos also got translated into the various techniques present, both in kata taken from Chinese martial arts and those created on Okinawa, as well as those that were recreated out of bits and pieces of other kata. For instance, the practice of striking the makiwara, and in general the preference for using closed fist techniques, seems to not really be present in most Chinese forms, but it is quite common on Okinawa. The makiwara had already existed as a generic training tool prior to the introduction of many of these Chinese forms, and so many of the indigenous Okinawan fighting methods, such as closed fist striking and the throwing and seizing techniques common in Okinawan sumo, ended up getting woven into how karateka practiced these newly imported kata. As another example, there is an interesting article by Andreas Quast, who I believe follows this channel, so uh, if you're out there, hi, <laughs> where he discusses an interview with Taira Sadayuki, where it is claimed that Sepai Kata was directly invented by Miyagi Chojun Sensei. While of course I cannot conclusively say that this is the case, the arguments that Andreas presents in that article, based on an analysis of the kata as well as another article by Tomoharu Kisaki, which makes the same claim, seem pretty sound to me. The various techniques of Sepai do, as he mentions in that article, bear a lot of resemblance to Tuidi techniques that would have been practiced not in karate but in the aristocratic martial arts of the Ryukyu kingdoms. Perhaps these techniques were in some way influenced by Miyagi's time training under Motobu Choyu Sensei. Even if the kata as a whole wasn't Miyagi's creation, it does still seem likely that his performance and his teaching of it could have been very much influenced by other arts, martial or cultural, that he trained or had access to. In fact, it's almost inconceivable that his practice wouldn't be influenced, at least to some degree, by these various instructions. So there we have it, our fourth and final stage of kata development. 
This, at last, is the stage where the Chinese forms would be fully combined with the indigenous culture and martial arts of the Ryukyu kingdoms, where they would, of course, develop into the core of the art that we know and love today. Also, quick note, I wanted to just say that in the time between when I recorded this and when I'm editing it to upload, I have got my first new patron. So thank you, Stefan Sandberg, for being my first official patron, and also the first to reach the green belt tier, where I read out your name in the credits. That's this for right now. I'll come up with something more official for the next one. Once again, thank you so much.